Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm uh, feeling feeling good today. It's As we record it, it's the beginning of October. This is my favorite time of year, so I'm, I just love it this time of year. This is also my favorite time of the year. Nice. And living in Colorado, before we jump into this week's episode, uh, I just went up to Estes Park and spent the weekend up in Estes, and it's beautiful up there. The, the leaves are all changing color. Colors, the elk route bugling, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a Native American festival. So I just, I'm coming off a fantastic weekend and I'm glad to be back on the call with you, man. Yes, it has been a little bitch. I mean, a little bit. It has been a little bit since the last time we got together. And uh, what have we got on the agenda for today's call? Selling is not about the sale. Oh, that sounds completely counterintuitive. (laughs) What do you Mm -hmm. mean by that? For people who want to sell the thing that they do and they want that to be easy, selling is not about the sale. It's actually about what happens before the sale, which is typically called marketing. Okay. I thought you hated marketing. I love marketing. Now, now I'm just completely confused. What is going on here today? Yep. So as we've talked about a bunch, you and I, and on the podcast, traditional sales and traditional marketing is mental gymnastics. It's psychological warfare. It's done with the intent of making somebody do a thing. Why do you like your favorite band? Not because of their marketing, not because of their selling, but because you resonate with them and their message and what they stand for and what they're about and how they sound and who and how they are. That all is natural marketing. Okay. So I'm, I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit of clarity here because I know that a lot of what you teach and a lot of what I've learned from you is basically letting that stuff out there so that when I do finally get on the call with somebody or when somebody does finally reach out to me, it's not so much of me trying to convince them to buy this thing. A lot of times they come to me already Mm pre-sold. Yeah. And there's a couple of reasons for that, but the, the actual selling of the thing is not about the sale. The selling of the thing is having the right people at the right time with the right message, right? And it's all about what happens before the sale. Interesting. We're going to get into this on an even deeper level in next week's podcast, but this is all about what happens before the sale. If you've got the right people and they're a good fit for you and they want need the thing, they just need to know that you exist. Right. If they know that you exist and they resonate with you and they want the thing and they need the thing, guess what? The selling of your thing is really easy. All here's here's what I'm trying to get across this week. Everybody thinks the magic happens in the sale or in the selling of the thing. And that is absolutely not the case. Especially if you want that to happen easy. It's all done beforehand. All of it. The sale should literally be one question. Here's the thing, Bob. Do you want it? Now, I've watched you for a while, and I know that that's how easy it is for you. I'm going to be transparent here. It's still not that easy for me. Um, I'm trying to get to that point, but uh, I want to take this back a couple of steps, and let's talk about resonating. Um, When it comes to a pair of shoes that I want or a a pair of jeans, a a brand of clothes, um, a particular band that I like. And and you didn't mention this. I want to get your take on it. A lot of times I buy those things because they help me express who I am as a person. So I'm wearing this particular 
brand of clothing because when people see me wearing this brand of clothing, it says this. Or when I look in the mirror and I see myself with this uh, T-shirt on, I was going to say haircut, but I don't have hair to cut. (laughs) But when I look at myself in the mirror, I say, oh, this says this about me. Is that the same for client getting? Is there overlap there? A lot of it, yes. It it depends a little bit on what you sell. Again, it's all in the context. However, most of us make a buying decision based on how it's going to affect our identity. I drive the kind of car that I drive because it's part of who I am. I wear the kind of clothes that I wear because it's part of who I am. I align myself with people like you because it's who I am. Resonating. You and I you and I resonate. We get along. There's a lot of things that we see totally eye to eye on core value wise and, and actual characteristic wise and personality traits. We share many of those things in common. It's really easy for you and I to be buddies because we are in resonance with each other. And so a big thing that you're all about is using social media and using these things that tell people your values. Um, I guess uh, people that are out there trying to make it easier for them to get on a sales call with somebody and close somebody on a sales call, how much of what they're doing with their LinkedIn profile or with their social media, their Facebook or whatever their preferred social media is, um, how much of that is actually helping build that connection and help? and, And how important is that when it comes to being able to say, hey, Bob, here's what I have. Do you want it? Mm-hmm. It's all in the context, right? I don't post stuff on LinkedIn about late 70s Ford pickup trucks or Pink Floyd. But by and large, the people that are going to check me out on LinkedIn are going to go check out my personality on Facebook. Guess what they see on Facebook? Late 70s Fords and Pink Floyd and lizards and snakes and outdoors, right? Earth conscious stuff, food, all of the shit that I'm actually about. Now on Facebook, right? For, for the people that are listening that do this just on Facebook, try posting 80% of what you post on your regular personal profile, just about shit you're actually interested in, 20% about business. A lot of the people that are in my world post nothing but business stuff and they go like, how come nobody likes and comments on my shit? Because they're not on Facebook to do that, mm-hmm. right? They know what you do. They see it all the time. They get sick and tired of hearing about it. So connect with them on all the stuff that you actually give a damn about, right? It makes when they're ready and they've chosen you to have that conversation with, it makes it really easy to make the sale. We don't really care necessarily about what people can do for us. We care about our problem being solved. By and large, and most of the most of the people that I work with, their people are making that decision on who they go with based on if they like that person or not. Let's make it easy for them to do that. I don't know about you, but when I decide I want to buy something, unless it's something I can buy from Amazon for $4.99, right? Books and authors excluded. But if I want to buy something like that, I don't need to do a lot of research. If I want to buy a pair of shoes or a pair of boots, I don't need to do a lot of research. But if I'm looking for somebody that can write a sales page for me and I've got a half a dozen options, guess what I'm going to go do? I'm going to go check out who and how they are. When I'm looking at a coach or a mentor for myself, guess what I do? Search-based intent. Duh. I'm going to go check them out. Oh, this guy likes to do this thing that I totally don't agree with. He's not on the list anymore. Oh, this guy's all about this thing that I'm like totally all for. Guess what? Now we're aligned. I'm going to pay more attention to that guy. Simple, but it's all marketing. Okay. So other than like the relation or the uh, relatability, the, the, um, I really like this person because they like this weird, obscure thing that I'm also really into. I've seen, I see sometimes you post something about tool. Mm -hmm. And I see some of the responses that you get or the tags. I've even been guilty of tagging you in some tool stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Other than that, though, other than the relatability and the the overlap of personalities, what are some other things that people should keep in mind before they get 
to actually selling the thing that they're trying to sell. It's all about your stance, which is positioning, which you can only do if you're marketing, right? Marketing is expressing your view to the marketplace. There's a lot of nuance to that, but it's all about what your core values are, what your global viewpoint is. You'll notice I never post anything about politics. I never post anything about religion and I never post anything about sexual orientation. Why is that? You and me get along in all these ways, but one of those three topics, if we're not on the same page, I've probably lost that sale. I don't give a shit what your religious or spiritual or political or sexual orientation beliefs, values, ideas, concepts. I don't care. It has no bearing on my world. But there's some other global views that you're going to kind of need to share with me if we're going to do business together, treating people the right way, not just like driving down the highway and throwing bags of trash out the window, right? Not thinking that it's okay to over medicate all of the little kids because they're full of energy. Like we're going to need to agree on some fundamental ideas and concepts. And so I'm going to lob that stuff out there. Oh, but that's polarizing. No, it's not because anybody that disagrees with that, I don't want in my world. Right? So it's not just the great big ideas. It's little things. I like pretty free language. I like innuendo. I like puns. I like haha funny. I like dry wit. I like really intelligent sense of humor. I post stuff like that. I pay attention to stuff like that because those are all indicators of other more important things as it applies to working with people. If I post a ha ha funny, super dry wit joke and somebody in my world doesn't get it and it goes right over their head, guess what? They might not be the right fit to work with me up here. Like they're all telltale signs of, of gathering your people. Okay. So we've only got about six minutes left. I want to cover these other two points that you have on here, which are really, I think, the key of getting people pre-sold when they come to you trying to buy the thing that they want. So they said, hey, I really align with this guy. I feel like doing business with this guy or girl is something that helps me express who I am and what's the kind of the last key ingredient to get them to where when you say, hey, Bob, this is what I got. Do you want it? They say yes. First, and this is a big one, they need to already have a massive amount of desire for obtaining the thing that you provide, whether it's a solution or a product or a service. They need to already be in a place where they've got lots of desire to have that. This is understanding who your marketplace is and where they're at in their journey and being able to identify somebody who's ready now versus somebody who might be ready in three months. It's one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you've identified those people in your marketplace that have that unbridled desire to have the thing that you want them to have, all you've got to do is create a little bit of demand for it. And creating a little bit of demand for it is, is a little bit of that positive indifference. It's just a little bit of the tease. It's, yeah, you can have that thing, but I'm not going to force it on you. If you want it, grow a pair, reach out and grab it. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think the, the way that I think of this is, and where I see so many people go wrong, is we say, hey, I've got this thing. Let me convince you that you should buy it. And your approach is, Hey, I know you want this thing and I've got it. You want it? And it's it's a completely different instead of trying to convince people to buy what you want to sell, you're just asking them or knowing what it is that they want to sell and instead of convincing them to buy something that you want to sell, you're convincing them to buy something they want to buy from you. I ask them questions that lead them to the conclusion that they must have the thing. It's Pre-qualifying and qualifying. Again, we'll get into that next week a little bit deeper. Okay. So 
Next week, we're going to go a little bit deeper. <laughs> I can't wait. And until then, if people want to check out more episodes of the, more episodes of the podcast, where can they go? Salesgirlapodcast.com is where we do this every Monday. All right. We will catch you later, Landon. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you that.